Hello students, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we'll be talking about aggregate demand and related concepts. It's a very important concept when it comes to studying macroeconomics and it's very important for students of class 11 and class 12 in certain boards to understand what aggregate demand is. So without wasting any time further, let's take a look at what aggregate demand is. So when we take a look at aggregate demand, AD for short, it is the total value of all final goods and services which all the sectors in an economy will demand at a given price and at a point in time. Now this point in time is generally one financial year. If we pay attention, we said that it is the amount of goods and services that will be demanded. So it is clear that it is still not demanded and hence it is considered that aggregate demand is planned expenditure or planned spending in the economy. Now, actual spending may be very different from planned. It could be less than the planned or greater than the planned spending in the economy. Now, when we talk about components of aggregate demand, we have four components which are listed here. The first component is consumption expenditure written as C. Second is investment expenditure written as I. The third is government spending written as G. And the fourth and final one is net exports, which is written as X minus M. Now, when we talk about consumption expenditure, people would generally spend on either durable commodities or non-durable commodities. Durables are the ones that could stay for a longer period of time with the consumers. So they can have repeated use of the commodity, just like your phones, your cars, so on and so forth. Non-durables are single use commodities and they get exhausted with one consumption like food and edibles. When we talk about investment, investment could be done in two categories. The first is replacement where the firms would be taking care of the existing capital stock and they would be paying up for their maintenance. Whereas induced on the other hand would be incurred when the firms would be looking forward to spend more on, on equipments and machinery so as to increase their productivity to cater to ever increasing demand. Government spending also has two components to it. We have consumption spending and investment spending. So consumption spending is basically where government would be providing um, goods and services to meet the needs of people. Say for example, uh, spending on healthcare, education, maintenance of law and order, defense, so on and so forth. Investment expenditure on the other hand would be uh, spending incurred by government on construction of roads, railways, highways, airports, ports, so on and so forth. Net exports is a difference between exports and imports. So exports is when one country sells goods to other countries and imports is when one country purchases goods from another country. So overall, when we talk about the calculation of aggregate demand, it is calculated as C plus I plus G plus X minus M when all the four sectors are considered. In the next slide, we'll take a look at how aggregate demand would be depicted in two sectors. So this is how the aggregate demand would be depicted in a two sector model. So this is a schedule here and the schedule has columns, namely income, consumption, investment and aggregate demand, which is a total of consumption and investment expenditure since it is a two sector model. So we have income going upwards from 0 to 600, consumption also increasing from 40 to 520. Investment is considered independent of income and hence it remains constant at all income levels. And aggregate demand is a simple addition of C plus I and this is how you derive the figures. Now when we take a look at this particular diagram, we see aggregate demand depicted on the Y axis and national income on the X axis. Now if you remember aggregate demand greatly depends upon the level of national income in the economy. So as the income level increases, you would see an increase in the aggregate demand and that's what you've, you would see in the diagram. Now in the diagram, we have the investment curve, which is this, which is a parallel curve to X axis. Consumption expenditure begins from the same point, more or less from where investment expenditure is beginning because at zero level of income, both consumption and expenditure investment are at 40 millions. So that's how it begins from the same point. And from there, it moves upwards as the income level increases. 
if we pay very close attention even at zero level of income you have some consumption getting incurred in the economy which is very evident in the schedule here now this consumption is generally denoted as a bar or c bar by many words and it is called as autonomous consumption so autonomous consumption is that consumption which people will be incurring to keep themselves alive since there is no income generated in the economy this expenditure would be taken care of from their past savings or borrowings right now when we take a look at aggregate demand this is the purple curve that we see here i've also labeled it at, as ad now this aggregate demand curve and the consumption curve which is in blue which is labeled here are running parallel to each other all right we can see it very evidently the difference or the vertical distance between these two curves between aggregate demand curve and the consumption curve virtually is representation of the investment which is constant at 40 and hence you see the parallel uh, running of these two curves now when we take a look at the diagram again both the curves which is aggregate demand and consumption are upward sloping or positively sloped it indicates that as the income increases expenditure would also tend to increase in this case aggregate demand would also increase so there are certain things that we need to remember when we talk about aggregate demand in a two sector model so the first thing that we need to remember here is there is some positive consumption at zero level of income and this is represented as a bar or probably c bar in many boards another thing that we need to remember here is both aggregate demand and consumption curves are positive curves they have a positive slope indicating that as the income increases consumption would increase and so will the aggregate demand investment curve is a horizontal line parallel to x axis indicating that it is independent of income and hence it is uh, constant at all levels of income now this investment level is also called as autonomous investment all right so that's about it that you need to remember in a two sector model depiction of aggregate demand students if you find my videos useful please do like and subscribe to my channel also don't hesitate to share my videos with your friends i'll meet you with another topic in another video Bye now. Take care.